A lot of students asked me to show my Vim setup, how I am configuring it and how I am using it. The most common question that I am getting in the comments, what color theme I am using. The color theme is called Groovebox and you can install it for any editor, like for example for VS Code. The second most common question that I am getting, why I am not using VS Code when all other people are using VS Code. And this is just because Vim for me is more flexible and comfortable than VS Code for example. Because you can configure it much deeper and the amount of key bindings and features that you have there is also much bigger than in VS Code. And before I will talk about my Vim setup, I want to say you for sure can copy it, but probably it won't just work out of the box for you, you still need to tune something, especially if you are using Windows. And if you are just a beginner and you want to learn coding, then you should not spend time on configuring your editor, simply take this code and start writing your code. But if you are an advanced developer and you want to speed up your development, then it might be that you want to invest some time in learning Vim and check if it really suits you. And there are different ways to use Vim. We can use it inside graphical application or inside the console. And I'm using it from the terminal, so inside console. And again, we have two different versions of Vim, which is the default Vim and Neo Vim. And essentially, the development of Vim was really stale. This is why a group of developers forked it and started to implement new features and called it Neo Vim. After some time, they implemented really a lot of stuff inside Vim itself, but I still prefer to use Neo Vim because they are constantly releasing some new features. But the main question is here why I'm using it from the terminal and not as an application. And the main purpose is that Vim shines together with Tmux. So what is Tmux? It is a terminal multiplexer, which means you can split your terminal, have different tabs, even different projects, as you can see here, and this is extremely fast. If you will try to open, for example, Intelligence IDEA or even VS Code, like 10 different projects, it takes a lot of time to switch between them. As you can see here, it is just a click for me and I'm jumping between projects. Now let's talk about my setup. What I have here is dot .files. What is dot .files? This is just a special repository with lots of configs to set up any new machine. Which actually means when I am getting a new MacBook on a new job, I can simply call one bash script and everything will be automatically installed. So what I have here is the main script and inside lots of different tasks which are configuring different things. But here we are talking about Vim, so we are interested in Simlinx files. And here we have lots of different programs. Inside .config I have NeoVim and here is the whole configuration of Vim and it is started from init vim. And the first thing to say here, I am using plug as a package manager. So the typical package manager installs all packages from GitHub repositories. But the main problem with that, if one of repository was updated, it may be that after installation your vim won't work without updates. This is obviously really bad, this is why we can use a feature inside plug, which is called log file. So it will create a log file for us and here are all versions of all packages that I am using and it stores inside the specific commit which I install every single time. Which actually means it doesn't mean what updates people are doing inside their repositories, my Vim is still stable. As you can see here as a leader key I am using space because it is extremely comfortable, which means if I want to save the file, I am hitting here space and then S. If I want to open the list of buffers, it will be space and B. So the first line here is the start of plug configuration. Here we have our Groovebox color theme, after the CSS syntax highlighting, less syntax highlighting, elixir syntax highlighting and markdown syntax highlighting. Just to show you, this is how markdown file is looking for me when I am writing my posts. And here I have a file tree for Vim. But actually this is not a file tree how it is typically working inside editors. As you can see I don't have a file tree here on the left. Essentially this is happening because this is not a comfortable behavior. You have your sidebar with the files and you must constantly jump between different splits. For example let's say here we have several splits in my application and on the left I have the sidebar. 
then I don't know on which split exactly I will open this file. This is not comfortable. But what the fix plugin is doing, it opens, as you can see, the file tree inside the current split, which actually means you always know your file tree is there inside your split and your file will be opened exactly in this split. So the file tree belongs to the split itself and it is extremely comfortable in comparison to other editors. The next thing here is Fuzzy Finder and this is an awesome package which allows you to look for files. So here I am clicking Ctrl P and I am getting the list of all files inside my application. I can just write here create article state and it will file all matches that are possibly there. If I will write here interface then we are getting even better match. And the same thing is going for buffers, we also have here fuzzy finder but this is the list of the files which I previously opened. Here we can look for example for package.json and it is automatically filtered. Vim commentary is a really nice plugin to comment out your code. I can write gcc to comment the line, as you can see here gcc comments the line, then gc will comment out the target and then we can use different motions, for example gcap to comment entire paragraph or gc in virtual mode to comment the selection and so on. For example here I can write gc and then shift g and it will comment out the whole file for me. The next package here is vim fugitive, this is to work with git effectively. And as you can see here we have lots of different commands from git. I can write here for example git div split and see what exactly was changed. After this we have two packages for syntax highlighting for TypeScript JS6 and JavaScript JS6 and also syntax highlight for JavaScript itself. I also have here a package to show the indentation. You can see here when we have a nice nesting all these lines are showing the nested indentation. Highlight Yang package is the package which highlights when you are copying something so you know that you successfully copied it. Undo package will show you all your local changes that you did. For example, I can write here undo toggle and I'm getting here the split with all changes that I did. And here I have just a single change four months ago and here I added copilot. The next package Vim surround allows you to surround your text with something, for example with square brackets or with quotes, realistically I am not using it that often because I type everything from scratch. And Vim repeat allows you to create commands from the surround, again I am not using that a lot. And the next package here is the most important, this is a language server, which actually means the TypeScript validation that you see in my videos is all these packages and exactly COC TS server. And as it is written with JavaScript and we have yarn inside, we want to lock all the dependencies so we are getting exactly the same state of the package again and again. After this I have a Haskell syntax highlight and some packages for markdown. What it allows me to do, I can write markdown preview and I am getting the preview of current markdown file in the browser. And here I can check how it is correctly styled and if all my images are there. Then I have handlebar syntax highlight and Vim abolish allows you for smart replacing, again I am not using that at all, multi file replace I am also not using a lot. But this package VCS Jump is really nice to show you all your merge conflicts when you have them so you can resolve them directly inside Vim. This is just a helper package to write your config and here I have a syntax highlight for Elm language and syntax highlight for GraphQL. And the last one here is a copilot which helps you to write your code more efficiently with AI tool inside your editor. So here were all packages, the question how they all are working together. And inside the Vim folder here inside plugged, all these packages are being installed. So essentially this is kind of node modules. Now here for us just two directories are interesting, plugin and auto load. Except this I have just snippets and here just a single TypeScript snippet, I am not using that at all. And inside spell folder I have some auto generated spell check files. So let's look first on the plugin folder. Here I have configuration for every single package. For example inside color vim I have configuration for the package of group box. Here inside coc I have the whole configuration for TypeScript server. Here first of all we have coc configuration and then all key bindings. Like for example go to definition, fix current line and fix references. 
For example, here I am hovering on user profile interface, I am clicking go to definition and I am jumping directly on the user profile. Or you can just hover on the variable and see what is the type of this property. This is COCV. Except of the configurations of all packages, I have here some auto commands. Here if my buffer is closed or focus is lost, which means I am jumping to another buffer, then it will auto save the buffer. And also it will auto save everything on the resize. And here on the bottom I have the important line, this is the functions which configure the status line. And the status line is what you can see here on the bottom of the Vim. So let's look on the status line now. Here we must jump inside autoload dot and here I have status line. And here is lots of configuration with colors and what must be rendered. And here one more file which is also related to the status line, how it should look when we have splits of file tree. So autoload directory is simply some functions which will be used later and we are creating them on initialize. Inside plugin I have the whole configuration on the Vim. And except of that we have just two files which are interesting, these are settings and key bindings. Inside settings I have the whole configuration of the Vim that you can typically see, like showing relative numbers, hiding messages, creating backups, configuring of the search and much much more. Inside key bindings I have lots of different key bindings which I am using every single day. Like for example space s is saving the file for me, space r redraw the whole Vim. Space and then CF will copy the relative path to the current file. And here I am configuring how I am jumping between the lines to the first symbol to the last symbol of the line, how I can jump between different splits inside Vim like this, then how to make a vertical split with VV, the horizontal split with SS and how to close the split with Shift Q. Also I have here a custom command to format the JSON file by using the installed Python. Here are some commands for indentation in visual mode, as you can see now I am inside visual mode and I can use here tab for example. And here are some configuration for pasting and copying which are more typical for other editors. So this was my Vim configuration, but here I must say several words regarding Tmux. You already saw. For example here I have on the bottom tmux, this is it, and I am inside tmux session. What is awesome, I can directly close the whole session, I am not inside tmux, not inside vim, and then I am just hitting t in this folder and I am back here with all open services and open editor. And this is exactly the same state and the same line where I was previously, because all this stuff is just hidden and it is still in memory. Additionally what I can do with Tmux, I can jump between different tabs here on the bottom and I can change their names, which is really comfortable because I can have my editor, then the started server and then the shell. But obviously we have more than one project, for example we have a frontend and then an API and maybe some worker, which actually means you need several projects. And in this case inside Tmux you can create several projects and then you can just jump to another project in a matter of seconds. And here you also have tabs and everything that you want it is always saved. And actually if you are interested to learn more regarding Tmux I already made a video on that so don't forget to check it out.